Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be covering how to do lens dirt in Blender. This is the effect you're going to get right here. Let's get right into it. So this is the image that we're going to be using in the compositor, and I'll go ahead and include a link to that in the description below. All right, go ahead and open up a new Blender file here. I'm using Blender 3.0. Change to cycles first. We'll go ahead and change the cycles here. And then go ahead and match our output size to the image size that we just downloaded. In that case, this is a massive image. We're going to go ahead and type in 3870 for our X uh, dimension and then 2177 for the Y. All right, now we're going to go ahead over to our compositing tab here. Go ahead and click on Use Nodes. And you're going to see these two nodes pop up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that image that I had and I'm going to drag and drop it onto the uh, node editor here. And that's going to go ahead and create a node for you automatically. So now we have this node based on that image we just downloaded. Now guys, I do want you to keep in mind that we can use pretty much any image with a black background here. This effect we're going for here is a lens dirt effect. So like dirt got onto the lens and you're looking through it. So that's the kind of effect we're going for, but you can use this for other images as well. So basically what we're doing here with this image is we're going to make it transparent so that we can overlay it in another project. And to do that, we're going to need three separate nodes. First, I'm going to go in here and add two mix nodes. I'm not going to plug anything in yet. We're just going to add the nodes and then I will show you how everything is set up. We're going to add one last node. It's going to be a brightness contrast node here. Now we have all the nodes we need to go ahead and convert this image to an alpha image. The first thing we're going to do here is change both of these mix nodes to screen. So we're going to go and click on this drop down here. We're going to click screen for each of these. One thing I forgot to mention, we're actually going to get rid of this rendered layers node here. So just go ahead and click X on that. All right, now we're going to start plugging things in. I'm going to go ahead and move my image all the way to the left here. Grab one of my screen mix nodes here. Move it just about here. Move the other screen node down here to make room for everything. And my brightness contrast is going to go on the bottom here. So the image output on the image node is going to go ahead to three different places. We're going to plug that into the bottom of the first screen node. We're going to plug it into the bottom of the second screen node. And we're going to plug it into the top of the brightness contrast node. So you'll have something that looks like this right now. Now for this top screen node here, we're going to want to go ahead and click the image output. And we're going to plug that into the first image input of the screen. So you're going to have something like this. We're going to go ahead and plug the screen image output into the image input of the composite and then the image output of the brightness contrast node into the alpha of the composite. We are almost ready to render. We're going to go ahead and change a couple values here. We're going to set the brightness to 50 and we're going to set the second screen uh, factor to 2. And then we're going to change one more thing, which is the image uh, color here. We're going to change that to black. Now if we go ahead and click render image, as you can see, here's our lens dirt effect, and you can see right to that checkerboard background there, which is showing that we have a transparent image. So wherever you decide to save this, you're gonna go ahead and get a transparent image that we can now overlay in another Blender project. All right, we're all taken care of with this part. Let's go ahead and start a new document. Uh, very first thing we're gonna do is switch to Eevee. This does work in cycles as well, but we're gonna use Eevee so that we can get a faster render time here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the light and the cube. Go to your world settings here and change the background color to solid black. Now we're going to go ahead and create a way to make a figure eight shape. So to do that, we're going to go add curve circle, and then we're going to switch to our top view by clicking on this little Z up here. All right. So now we're on top view. Now, in order to create this effect, we're going to want to move this circle up half of its radius. So since it's currently uh, one, one by one by one, we're going to move it up on the Z axis, I'm sorry, the Y axis by 0.5. So now you can see it's sitting up 0.5 on the Y axis. Go ahead and click tab to go into edit mode. You'll notice this circle has four points that it consists of. They're each curves that we can adjust. What we're going to do is select the first point at the top here. We're going to hold control. Well, first we're going to switch to our move tool, right? So you see these arrow keys. We're going to hold control and we're going to move it all the way down to the bottom here, right, in the middle. And then we're going to move it all the way to the right so that it lines up with this bottom point and this top point. So if we zoom in here, we can see that it intersects these two right here. We're going to do the same thing with this point here. We're going to hold control 
and we're going to drag it all the way over to this line. So now this dot here, this little point, lines up with our new point here. And we have a little figure eight. I'm going to go ahead and click tab to get out of that. We now have a figure eight that any object can follow. Now we need an object to follow on this path. So let's go ahead and click add mesh icosphere. We're also going to scale this down. So let's go ahead and scale it down to 0.1. So click S, 0.1, and enter. Now we have a small icosphere. I'm going to just zoom in here. And then we're going to do a little shortcut that a friend taught me. Control 2, which subdivides by 2. And then I'm going to right click Shade Smooth. So now we have a nice sphere here that we made from the icosphere. Now we're going to create an object constraint on this object. So go over here to the object constraint properties. Click this drop down and go ahead and click follow path. I'm going to zoom out here so we can see everything. And we're going to target this path that we just made. So this figure eight is where the icosphere is going to follow. So I'm going to click on this little eyedropper tool here and I am going to click on the Bezier circle. And now as you can see, our icosphere just snapped to this path that we made. So now how do we animate that? All we have to do to animate this is go over to our object constraint properties and click animate path. And now if we press spacebar, you can see that our object follows that path. So we want this to be a complete loop. And the way we do that is we go ahead to our Bezier curve, we go to object data properties, and then we want to click this little drop down that says path animation. And right here, this top number is exactly how long it will take to loop uh, one complete cycle. So since it's 100 frames, we're going to go into our output properties and you'll see 1 to 250. For our end frame, we're going to make that 100. Now if we uh, expand our little timeline here and we press play, you'll see that it'll loop fully and it'll restart on its own. So now we have a seamless loop to work with here, which is great. Now let's go ahead and place our camera where we want uh, in the scene. Alright guys, so now we're going to set up our camera. Go ahead up here to camera, make sure you click on that. And I'm just gonna start by setting every value to zero. Okay, so now you can see our camera is face down and the, here's the values that you wanna use. X, keep that zero. Y, you keep that zero. Z, we wanna go ahead and make that four. Now if we go up here to view cameras, active camera, you're gonna see that we're nice and zoomed in here on a top down perspective of our, our uh, figure eight. So if I click play, you can see everything fits nicely in that frame. Now we're going to click on the icosphere, go down to our materials tab, make a new material. Let's give this an emission shader and we're going to give that a value of 10. We're almost ready to do our lens dirt overlay. I'm going to go to frame one here and I'm going to click render image. And as you can see, we just have a white dot, which is exactly what we want. And once we do this overlay, that is going to reveal all the lens dirt with this emission shader here. So this is what you should have at this point on frame one, if you follow followed along to this point. All right, let's go and head over to our compositing tab and click on use nodes. And you're gonna to wanna to have Node Wrangler enabled for this tutorial. The next step is to add all the necessary nodes and then we'll plug everything together. Start by adding a glare node. All right, we've got our glare node here. Don't worry, it'll automatically plug things in if you drop uh, if you drop a node in between two of the lines here. And that's okay, we're gonna fix that later. We're gonna add two mix shaders in, just like before. Mix shader here, and a mix shader right here. Now we're gonna go ahead and, and add a viewer node. And you'll see what that does later. It's very nice, very convenient to see your results. Let's add a scale node. All right, now we're going to go ahead and drag in our alpha image that we made in the last blend file. So I'm going to drag that in. And if you drag and drop, guys, remember that it creates a node automatically for you. Very convenient. Guys, before we start plugging stuff in, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this away. If you just click and drag from the input, it just gets rid of those lines. So we're going to start from complete scratch here. I'm going to start by dragging my glare node over here so that it's sitting right by the rendered layers node. I'm going to click my mix nodes and I'm going to drag them as such. We're not going to connect anything yet, I'm just organizing. We've got our scale node here, this is our image node, and then we're going to have our composite node and the viewer node right next to each other over here. First thing we're going to want to do is connect our alpha from the image to our image in the scale node. 
and then we're going to click that drop down and make sure that that is on render size. All right. Next, we're going to go ahead and connect our image output from rendered layers into our top mix shader like that. And then we're going to also connect it to our glare node down here. All right. So we've got two lines coming off of the rendered layers node here. The next step is to connect the glare to the bottom mix shader on that top, that top uh, sphere there. And then we're gonna connect the scale to the mix shader as well, as shown here. Now we're gonna connect the output of this mix shader to the input of this mix shader. And then we're gonna take our last mix shader here, and this is where we're gonna split this output to the composite and the viewer. In order to split this between the composite and the viewer node, we're first gonna connect the image output to the image input. And then we're gonna hold shift and right click, right click and drag on this line. And you'll see it created another little dot here. And we can just simply drag off of that into our viewer node. Now you should get a little something back here like this. Now we're gonna plug in some custom values to all these nodes in order to make everything work. First, let's go to our glare node here and change this top drop down to fall glow. Next, we're gonna click the drop down below that. Instead of medium, we're gonna choose low. And then for mix, we're gonna use the value one. Threshold, you can keep that as one. And size, we're gonna go ahead and do nine. Now, for our first mix node on the bottom here, we're gonna click that drop down and we're gonna make that multiply. And the factor should, should remain one. For the second mix node, we're gonna make that a factor of 0.5 and we can keep that as mix. The final step is where you see viewer here, we're gonna uncheck alpha. At this point, we're ready to render. So I'm gonna go ahead and click render image. Now you'll notice we have some lens flare or lens glare right here with the, uh, the lens dirt. So we have our effect working, clearly working. And once we render the full animation, it's gonna reveal the entire overlay very nicely. However, sometimes on some frames, you'll notice that the image gets cut off on the bottom here. And in order to fix that, you can go ahead and X out of this render. And with the scale node right here, instead of render size, you can do scene size. So I'm gonna go back to frame one and I am going to render image. And as you can see, nothing's cut off. Whereas if you clicked render size, you might have some of the uh, lens dirt cut off here. So feel free to play around with that node. You're gonna get different results depending on the image sizes that you do have. Now we're gonna go ahead and render the full animation. I'm gonna go to my animation tab here. You guys can choose whatever you'd like. I'm gonna go to my full rendered view. You're not gonna see anything in this uh, viewport here because you have to render a frame in order to see how it works with the compositing. But I am gonna go to my output properties here and change my file format from PNG to FFmpeg video. I'm gonna click the little encoding dropdown. Instead of Matroska, we're gonna wanna use MPEG4 and I'm gonna go ahead and bump that output quality up to high quality. Now I'm just gonna choose an output folder, in this case, the desktop. I'm gonna choose a name. I'm gonna say seamless loop, enter. Go ahead and accept that. And then we should be all set up and ready to go. If you wanna change your frame rate, you can. I usually do 30 frames a second. Um, if you really wanna go crazy, you can do 60, but it might seem a little fast considering it's only 100 frames long. So at 30 frames a second, we're just a little bit under four seconds here. 120 would be exactly four seconds. We're at 100. Let's go ahead and render this thing out. And I'm gonna fast forward this part here. I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this. And if you go to render view animation, this is our completed animation right here. And as you can tell on the surface, there is some lens, uh, lens dirt that is being shown ever so slightly, if you were to bump up that emission intensity, it would probably reveal more of that lens dirt. So there you guys go. And this is pretty much two tutorials in one because you have a looping figure eight animation as well as a lens dirt overlay. And remember guys, you can use this with any image that has a black background. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.